Hello and welcome to another episode of Best Invest. Joining us today is our friend and investment expert, Mr. Anshul Maheshwari. Anshul, welcome to the show. Thank you. In this series, we have been discussing different ways, both for long-term investment and learning short-term techniques. When talking of long-term investments, we talk about numbers. Continuing on this journey, we will discuss about a powerful tool today that is authentic enough to help analyze numbers. Authentic because they are submitted by the companies to the regulatory bodies. Anshul, please help us understand what is XBRL. So yes, uh, this is a very powerful tool. Thank you, Kapil. Uh, XBRL is actually part of, is, is similar to XML or HTML. If people are familiar with web page development, they, they can easily understand what is HTML. They can easily understand what is XML. And then this just goes, uh, go, takes things beyond that. It's called X, uh, extensive, uh, extendable business reporting language. Okay. So, uh, like as Anshul said, this tool is uh, pretty much friendly to anyone who's know, who knows a little bit of programming. Not necessarily he needs to be a software engineer, but these days, even school-going kids, they are aware of a little bit of programming and they can help uh, take out data out of this XBRL tool and uh, they can analyze data. So, anyone can do it. You should have a bit of taste. Anshul, uh, in these X, like you said, it is quite similar to XML. Uh, does it contain XML kind of tags? Yes, that's right. So, um, so what I'm going to go through is like start with XBRL, then what are then we'll discuss about about tags, then taxonomies, then how does XBRL works, what are the benefits of XBRL, then we'll take some examples for our for our viewers. Okay. So going through what is XBRL, it's just a data rich direct of XML, as, as I said earlier, extensible markup language. It is, it is in a format that the information between businesses and users of financial information is communicated easily. Uh, and who are the business users uh, or, or the users of financial information are analysts, invest, investors and regulators. So here we are talking, talking mostly about investors. It also provides a common electronic format for business reporting. It's a worldwide standard developed by an international um, organization, non-profit making uh, consortium, XBRL International Inc. You can easily look that up. And they, these are, they have developed some basic specifications which define how XBRL works. So uh, this XBRL, like you said, it's an international format, uh, internationally uh, accepted format. And this is available on the websites of the regulators and uh, the stock exchanges. And not only in India, in India, you can find it on the website of NSE. Uh, similarly, in foreign countries, uh, you can find it with other exchange websites. And uh, even I think some of the companies carry it on their own website. Yes, that's right. That's right. So uh, BSE or the SEBI, SEBI, the regulator of India made it mandatory for some companies which have a turnover to submit all their financial statements in XBRL format. They just followed what the US regulator SEC did a uh, few years back. So okay. these are, as you said, very rightly, and it's definitely a useful informa information for investors that it's freely available at nseindia.com. Okay. So Anshul, how does, uh, what are the, taxonomies of XBRL and how does it work? So taxonomy is basically a dictionary, right? Like, like you need a dictionary to write uh, sentences in English. Similarly, the, for this business reporting language, you need a predefined taxonomy or a dictionary, a set of tags or set of definitions for, which are associated with those tags. So let me quickly uh, go through some of the tax, taxonomies like different countries have different accounting standards, reporting under each standard reflects different definitions. So each country will have its own taxonomy based on their accounting standard. It, so uh, taxonomies provide definitions, information, and meaningful structure to the XBRL tags. 
people who, have, who are familiar again with HTML and XML will understand like what the tags are and um, so this also we, they, they provide a more structure than XML. Okay. As a result, taxonomies enable computers with XBRL software to understand the tag like what, it, what does the tag mean, what is it doing, what are the characteristics of the tag, for example, is, does it have a negative value? These all things are missing in XML and HTML. I'm just comparing so that people who are aware of these uh, technologies can easily compare that there is something extra going on. Then it, its relationship to other items, right? whether it's part of a calculation and all. So everything is defined in those taxonomies. Okay, nice to know. Uh, so uh, what are the, how does basically this XBRL thing works? Uh, before I go there, let me talk about XBRL tags a bit. A bit. Mm -hmm. So, in, so information there in the XBRL tag is not a static block. It's uh, it's broken down into unique items of data. For example, total liability is equal to hundred, and data items are assigned markups, which make them computer as well as human readable. Both 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 uh, both things can read it easily. For mm -hmm. example, the tag liabilities, uh, you know, open liabilities, the open thing, then 100, and uh, you close liabilities tag, enables the computer to understand that the item is liabilities and it has a value of 100. So then moving to your question, how it works, it's like a powerful and flexible version of XML, as I said earlier, defined specifically to meet the requirements of business and financial information. So that's the key, business and financial information. Now, XML is used in a generic way. XBRL is only used for business and financial information. And it allows labels in any language, so any language you can use, Hindi or whatever, but right now we only have English versions, as well as accounting references for or other subsidiary information. So accounting references like profit before, law, profit before tax and all that uh, can be applied. Shows how the items relate to each other as we discussed in taxonomy. More importantly, it's easily extensible so organizations can adapt it to meet a variety of special requirements. Okay. Oh, how about the benefits? Well, yeah, benefits are uh, hopefully already very clear but I'll just say like automation, cost saving, they are faster, more reliable and more accurate handling of data, especially financial data. And there is an improved analysis because computer is, you can write programs to do your analysis based on the data that you, have get, that you are getting. Compare that to the financial statements that you, that are not XBRL, that are not in XBRL format. Then a human has to intervene. Here the computer can do most of it. Then data collection and reporting for companies, not so important for investors, but they should know that you know the the or the if the uh, data collection and reporting is automated, then it will be more accurate compared to if a human is data is collecting the data for that company. Correct. That's the reason I said it is an authentic <laughs> source because if it is being submitted to regulators, it is uh, like without any manual intervention. It has to be much pure than what it ha would have been. Uh, gathering data manually and working upon it. Yes, as you said, and it's also validated before submitting both sides, like the company validates it, their side, and then when you, when you submit to SEBI or to MCA, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, they validate at their side too. Okay. Now, um, as we told earlier, these XBRL are available on stock exchange websites and Ministry of Company Affairs website as well. Uh, we would like to take some examples and these examples are merely for the sake of examples. Please do not consider any of these as a recommendation. Yes, that's right. So easily available on NAC India. There are other places it's also available, but it's difficult to find that. So I've also given a link in, uh, in here, which you can share with your users. You can select a stock for which you need financial statements in XBRL format. For our purposes, we selected Asian Paints. 
and there are two ways to filter data uh, you can do period ended equal to quarterly or you can do period ended equal to annually so annually is audited data quarterly is more data for each quarter but it's an audited data i selected the annual one for our example okay and then uh, you know this is how it looks like if you uh, apply the filter and go to this site there are different xbrls uh, for diff for asian paints for different dates you can see that and there's a link at the end uh, this is where you can download the xbrl format of the financial statement on the rightmost side of the nse website yes that's right and then uh, i just took a screenshot out of the xbrl that that i got this is for 31st march 2020 and you can see i have highlighted like um, a portion of it which will be very uh, you know uh, investors will be very interested in this so it talks about profit before exceptional items and tax and the value there is 69526 something then exceptional items before tax where the value is zero and you can see the profit before tax because there is no exceptional items before tax is the same as profit before exceptional items and tax so human readable you can see that already but we'll see like how it's computer readable as well easily correct and once you automate it for uh, one time you can put any xbrl and uh, get the numbers for any other company as well yeah that's the beauty of it like you just do coding uh, you this is the boring stuff which can be automated you just automate it and then yes once one coding takes care of everything else okay so just let us walk through the snippet and how it works yeah so it's a very small uh, piece of code which i wrote in python you can read you can do it in any other language that you are comfortable with python is a very nice language because it requires less amount of code uh, but it can be written in r in java in c++ c whatever language uh, suits suits you v visual basic so <clears throat> what what i do is uh, i just import the xml dom the document object model uh, people who are familiar with xml will understand that but you don't have to be a software engineer as you said earlier you just have to you know understand what's going on here once you have downloaded then you got this file name you need to point to the location of that xml file that i just showed uh, i am taking the example of bharti hairtel here before that i was taking asian paints so you can do asian paints as well and then you say you load that into a doc which is line number 12 here doc equal to xml dom mini dom parse the file name this loads the document object model into this doc variable so let's say now you need the revenue from operations mm -hmm. so all you have to do is uh, you say doc dot get element by tag name we talked about xml X, uh, xbrl tags so actual tag name you just have to specify that within brackets in quotes um, with in this function once you do that then it gets assigned to a variable which is also called revenue from op operations and then i just print that revenue from operations we printed using revenue from operations uh, bracket 0 dot first child dot node value just uh, this is just a syntax uh, you you can do it repeatedly for any tag you want uh, you don't have to understand what's going on but if you are a programmer you might want to look at what's going on in here but once you print that you see the value uh, which is printed on my right side in the console it's 150492 and uh, whatever so so you can see that you already got a number so if you get similar numbers you can use the program to calculate to assign to to find ratios and also compare comparative for comparative analysis yep so you can see how five to six lines of code can do wonders and these are numbers are authentic without any human error and it can help you plan shape and identify where you want to invest and to uh, weigh on which company is better than the other 
So for this, I would like to say, if you have any queries with Best Invest, please write to us on the Twitter handle below or the email ID given. And stay tuned for more such tricks and tips and for your investment. And keep watching. Please like, share and subscribe our videos and signing off in this Corona time. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourself, your family and your investments. Thank you. Thank you.